Don't you know that not listening to the Shenmue AM2 podcast is way uncool? Welcome back to another episode of the Shenmue AM2 podcast. We're your hosts, Andrew. And Matt. And we are here again for part two of our interview with Ryo Hazuki himself, the voice, uh, English voice actor, Corey Marshall. Greetings, everyone. Perfect. Um, thanks for uh, doing another one of these with us. Uh, the people at home don't need to know we're doing this in one sitting. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, so this... Well, uh, for, yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, thanks, thanks for uh, having me back. Um, but not, yeah, it's like, we're still here, but thanks for having me back. Uh, so this episode is going to be more of talking about some Shenmue 3 stuff, and then we also had some fan submission questions, uh, so we'll do those, and, uh, we'll do our time machine gimmick as well. Um, These are the best, because, uh, you know, sometimes fans can really throw me a, a curveball, so, uh, hopefully... <laughs> There's a really weird one in well, here. Uh, hopefully somebody will stop me on something. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a couple odd ones. Um, so... You've, I think you've stated you had no pre-knowledge of Shenmue 3 announcement for, before the public did? Yeah. Um, no, I, I literally found out the same day everybody else did. Who um, let you in know? In fact, uh, a lot of people know that. <coughs> I'll, uh, I'll let you know about that story. Whoops, hold on. <laughs> now I got a problem. I got to get some water just a second. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, so a lot of people know. Mm. There we go. Ah, good. <laughs> Ooh, ah. There we go. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, yeah, a lot of people know that it was such a big kind of a secret that they um, had a uh, another guy kind of do an impersonation of me during the uh, <laughs> during that uh, demo that they showed, and uh, I know that that was kind of upsetting to to some people, but uh, you know, yeah, it, it is it is like a big secret, right? Mm. And they kind of uh, just just did this big announcement, and they again they didn't even tell me either. You know, it's just kind of like, um, yeah, they're kind of like ninjas over there, right? <laughs> you know. <laughs> if you can, um, and the way that I, I found out. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. You go ahead. <laughs> Stupid delay. <laughs> okay. So the way that I uh, the way I found out is. Uh, uh, the way I tell the story is, I think I was uh, I was coming home with my daughter. I had taken her somewhere, and um, my oh, I, I can't. So I was in the car, and um, so I was driving. My my phone kind of started pinging. You know what I mean? I think it's just mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of uh, um, notifications started coming through on my phone, and I was like, oh, okay, well, something's going on. Something's going on on Twitter. Somebody posted a picture of Shenmu or something like that. We'll see. You know, the kind of notifications kind of kept coming in. I was like, oh, man, well, all right, so I'll check this in just a second. Because, you know, I'm driving, I'm responsible, I'm not going to be mm -hmm. checking my phone while I'm... <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, I had my hands full when I got to the house, you know, and I'm trying to get my daughter in the house, and things are kind of going on, and the thing, that, the, my phone keeps going off, and I'm like, okay, all right, so, I don't know, there's an emergency in the family, uh, somebody's died, and I thought, well, maybe somebody would call me if that happened, I'm like, I don't know, something, something's definitely going on, <laughs> and as I was kind of shuffling in the house, my my wife kind of comes up to me with her iPad, and she kind of looks me right in the face, and she's like, <laughs> did you hear? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, um, and that's when I kind of had that moment, I was like, is it Shenmue? Yeah. <laughs> so I think this the same thing was happening to her because she's kind of connected to to my stuff as well, and she likes she likes to 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 read the stuff that comes in with Shenmue and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, this the kind of the same thing happened to her. So she, her her iPad was blown up, my phone was blown up, and when she kind of came to me with that look in the face, I, I thought, okay, yeah, it's it's Shenmue. It's it's you know what I mean. Something mm -hmm. big's definitely happening. So yeah, I had to. Uh, you know, turn on the event. I had to see what was going on. I started reading all the reactions and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's that's how I found out 
<laughs> I, I'd be genuinely interested to see the amount of seconds, not even minutes, the amount of seconds between someone and anou- like them announcing it on the stage and then someone asking you about it on social media or telling you. <laughs> I guarantee 30 seconds tops. <laughs> just some rabid fan to like, oh my god, did you know about this? Are you doing voice acting? <laughs> like just over the top. Yeah, you know, I think um, <clears throat> I think the like right away people started immediately asking, um, yeah, are you coming back for three? Um, which was at the time I was like, I don't know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I I I, I hope I, I think I hope so. I don't know. We'll see. And then um, yeah, I, I think those those questions started coming immediately. And then yeah, when I saw the take and I saw and I and I saw the other voice actors, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Hmm. hmm. Okay, that guy sounds a lot like me. <laughs> they must have done that on purpose, you know. And I thought, wait, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Did they find somebody who's going to do it for like twelve dollars a day who just sounds like <laughs> me, <laughs> and uh, that that's what's happening, or did they get, did they find a guy who sounds like me because they want me back? You know, of course, all these things are kind of going through my brain, and I'm like, oh man, I really want to do this project, you know? Yeah. Because uh, like I said, I just I just love the project, you know. I I love Shamu, and I'm 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 a fan myself, so. Yeah, when I when I saw that, I was like, I, I want to come back, and of course, fan reaction and all that kind of stuff. They ended up calling me, um, not too long. I don't remember the timeline, but it was in a matter of, I'm gonna say maybe in just a matter of weeks. You know what I mean? They called me up mm-hmm. and uh, and asked me if I want to be in the project, and I was like, I don't know. Let me think about it. Um, I'll have my people call your people, and no, of course, yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> I, yeah, I definitely want to be a part of the project. Yeah, that's awesome. And so was, wait, sorry, go ahead. I hate this. Oh, I was just gonna say, it's, it's pretty. It was pretty easy because they they wanted me back. I wanted to be back, and uh, you know, I guess uh, it's kind of funny. I already I already said yes to the project before we even talked about any sort of you know contract negotiations or how much money they were gonna pay me or where it was even going to be. If, you know, if it was going to be uh, voiced in Japan, if it was going to be here in the United States, it's it's kind of funny because you don't normally, you know what I mean? You don't normally say yes to a project without knowing anything about the project. Right. But I kind of, I kind of knew, I kind of knew a little bit about what was going on. Of course, we all know the circumstances and about kind of where Shenmue was 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 standing at the time. And I just, you know, I just said to myself, I don't really care. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really care the specifics or um about what kind of contract they're going to give me all that kind of stuff i just kind of figured like this is this is this is just what i want to do mm. so i'm just going to do it you know i don't i don't i don't really care about, <laughs> about the specific specifics so much mm. so i just i just said yes without without even really knowing much do you know yet if this will involve a trip to japan or if you're going to record it more locally no, um, uh, as of right now, as of today, tomorrow might be different. Uh, as of today, we are going to be doing it uh, locally. Okay. Um, uh, at least for me, uh, I'm not sure what they'll be doing uh, with uh, with other voice actors. Um, you know, I mean, it, you know, I, I, the reason I bring this up is because I know a lot of people are really concerned about the the money aspect of it mm. and where the money's going and all that kind of stuff and. Um, you know, because they, of course, they just want the most fantastic game possible with is, you know, so, so I understand where, where fans are coming from. So, yeah, yeah I don't know if they're going to be doing uh, other voice actors here because they could find some, some good voice actors here in the States for, you know, not, not a ton of money. And, um, I, I, I wonder what they're going to be doing with the with the day-to-day everyday people that we're going to be meeting in the towns on the streets you know all that kind of stuff we'll we will see as far as that but as far you know as far as i'm concerned as of today i will be doing it more locally and probably okay. uh, just here in la well don't worry all those people out there concerned about money Corey's just willing to do it for another cool watch <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, just a, just a <laughs> high five and a nice cold Coca Cola every day would be fine with me. Yeah. Uh, when you do go in to record it, do you have any plans uh, to take any sort of different approach to Rio? Are you going to try to copy what you did before, or just leave it up to voice director? 
Yeah, you know, um, uh, you know, people have talked about this too about the game kind of going in a in a different direction. I mean, obviously things are kind of uh, changing story wise. You know what I mean? We're kind of we might be leaving the everyday the 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 kind of uh, I don't know if you want to say normal life yeah. of. Uh, well, what's normal about going on an epic uh, quest yeah. of revenge, right? But, but it's about to get fantastical. But instead, we, we might be getting fantastical, right? I think yeah. a lot of people are uh, expecting that. You know, we're we're kind of we're getting into some more, um, some more myth and magic with floating swords and mirrors that do uh, um, well. But there's also a lot of speculation out there on the web too about about what's going on. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so as far as the storytelling is concerned, yeah, should should he kind of uh, become a, more of a different person? Should he kind of change his attitude on life? Should he act differently? Should he should he you know I don't know should he kind of grow up? Uh, a, a little bit uh, since so much has happened to him in his short life mm. um, that that will definitely be a question that we have when we get there so I can't um, answer that question <laughs> <laughs> That's right, right now well you do know, you have so any it, do you have any hopes for Rio do you hope he lightens up a little bit <laughs> Yeah, right. So, so um, that, that's that's kind of it, right? So, are we going to go from this, uh, as, as I call him, a very stoic character, to something that, um, you know, I, I think if there is change in the character, if uh, um, uh, Yu Suzuki or the directorial team or storytellers or uh, you know whatever we got um, go in that direction. See, here's the thing: as a voice actor. I have uh, ideas and plans for a character, but ultimately it's really kind of up to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I I bring what I think needs to happen to a character, and we can talk about that um, uh, when we get into the studio. Ultimately, I have to do what they say. So uh, uh, you know, people 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 first of all should know that because they're they're the boss. I'm you know I mean I'm I'm just a just a voice actor. You know what I mean? And um, so, so I bring what I got. I bring what I think should happen. And then, as far as that, as far as the character ultimately ending up the way that it is, I'm, I'm told. So, um, yeah, as far as character development, I tell you what, I think it would be interesting if 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 things did change. So, if they do, if we decide to go in that direction, it would have to kind of, of course, go slowly. You know what yeah. I mean? So we're we're gonna might see some character development throughout the entire uh, game process. You know what I mean? I'm I'm definitely toward the beginning of the game. I'm gonna be um, Ryo Hazuki, how everybody knows and loves him or loathes him, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Um, and if there there is any sort of change, because the story is probably gonna go in some interesting directions, that that'll that'll definitely happen slowly. And uh, we'll we'll be kind of feeling that out, uh, I think, as we go. If they approach you about voicing other characters, kind of like Eric Kelso, is that something you think you'd be open to mm-hmm. doing? Do you have a lot of voices in your in your arsenal? <laughs> I thought you were going to say in your head. Do you have a lot of voices in your head? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, the thing I did, it, it, I, I talked about this before. And uh, yeah, when I did some other things too, when I did uh, Japanese anima- uh, Japanese animation stuff like that, yeah, I did do did do different characters and you know yeah whatever I, you know just impersonations of other characters and stuff that you see on uh, TV and uh, so yeah, c- could I do those things? Absolutely. But when I when I spoke to them and I said, oh, will you 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 have me doing any other characters? Because I see you've got a lot of characters here. And they said, yeah, we talked about that, but we kind of feel like we don't want you to do that. And I said, oh, really? And they said, yeah, we kind of want you to concentrate on this character. We kind of want you to do just one character. And I said, okay. You know, I mean, it's it's up to you. I mean, I'm here. I can do it. I can, you know, I can give you a younger voice. I can give you an older voice. I can do, you know, whatever. Uh, but they said, no, we kind of just... We kind of just want you to do this one character, and I think that's probably just part of their process and how they want me to be in my head all day, every day. They just want me to 
to be Hazuki, you know what I mean? I think they just want me to kind of live and breathe that for as long as I'm there, as long as I'm recording. At least that's my impression of what they were telling me. Um, it was, of course, during during the first game, they mm-hmm. they kind of talked to me about that. So yeah, that, that's that's just part of their process back then. Uh, again, we're kind of in a new world right now. We'll we'll uh, we'll we'll see. Yeah, nothing wrong with doing it that way. Were Were you excited about the Kickstarter reward that announced the about the phone card and being able <laughs> to speak with characters from the original game? Um, oh, I thought you were going to talk about him about him leaving voicemail messages for Patreon. No, um, <laughs> like getting to interact with those old characters that may not necessarily be a part of the story, uh, progressing game story of the game, but just being able to to step back into those 1980s low cut sneakers and and yeah. have these conversations. <laughs> Conversations with with someone like, uh, say, for example, a, a Fukusan or a, mm-hmm. a, a Guizhang who may not be uh, along for the ride in Shenmue Three, I guess. Yeah, you know, I I, I do love that. I think that's great because first of all, um, wouldn't a guy phone home, you know, <laughs> and and talk to uh, Fukuhara-san? I mean, why not, right? I mean, why wouldn't he talk to Fukusan? I mean, that's just something that, that a guy would do if he had a phone available. Why not call some of these people? I mean, we've he's called other people in the past, so uh, yeah. why not phone home, right? Hey, just call him to let yeah, you know I I'm do. not dead. I, that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, right? Um, but, uh, I, yeah, and I think fans are going to appreciate that, too, right? When you get a, when you get a chance to talk um, to some of the, the past characters and kind of yeah, just kind of relive that a little bit. Get a little bit of a bridge from here to there. Just kind of remind people, uh, or or even just 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 because you can and it's fun and it's there, you get you get a bridge from the past to now. And yeah, I think that's great because there's so much time that has passed. It's just going to be great. Yeah, I think that is a fantastic idea, and I'm I'm glad that we're doing it. Mm. Uh, it's gonna give all the nostalgia feels. <laughs> it's it's one of the things right? that I'm most excited for about this game. Yeah, and it's by the sounds of things, they the way people have described it, it may help um, with flashbacks to kind of fill in some uh, of the gaps for people who haven't played the first two. And I think that's a really mm-hmm. good way of doing it because uh, they do have to be creative, I guess. And taking into consideration not everyone is going to go back and and get a dreamcast or an xbox to play the first two hopefully we won't need to again right. shenmue one and two hd people <laughs> <laughs> so i mean yeah and another thing too let's just, i mean because so much time has passed um let's just say people are oh, okay well maybe i'll pick up uh this game and they're maybe they haven't played like you said the past games are they going to be willing to pick up two more games and be like, oh, well, in order to play this game, I have to play two more games? You know what I mean? Maybe that maybe that would be maybe too much for some new players. Mm. Uh, but yeah, in order to, in order to kind of get those people in, yeah, these, these phone calls could be it, right? This could be the way to get people who haven't, who are not willing to, like you, like you mentioned, get another system or an old system, or to even just play two games that they haven't played before, is to get these people involved, so you can, um, so people who haven't played those games can enjoy it. I think, yeah, that is, that's great. Yeah, I mean, there's a way, there's a way to do this game that uh, anybody can just pick it up. Not every piece of media has a story sure. that starts at the beginning. Sure. The, they could do something similar too to the Yakuza games, where there's literally cutscenes of the previous game's cutscenes. Yeah. Um, you can go and reminisce, as they call it. Yeah. Which is a, a great option. I'm not a fan of rewatching uh, old cutscenes, like just sitting there like a like a movie. But the, again, this generation of YouTube watchers, I'm sure they'll be fine with it. <laughs> You, you almost sound a little hostile there. <laughs> I don't get this. I don't understand this phenomenon. <laughs> I just watch people play Minecraft, Matt. There's nothing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, um, did you ever, Corey, think that the once you, you know your wife had notified you that the Kickstarter was announced, did you ever think it would hit over six million dollars? <sighs> um. You know, to be honest with you, I'm I wasn't really surprised. <laughs> really? Um, 
Yeah, I, I think it's just because I've I've known uh, and talked to people so long about Shenmue, and all of the uh, even just fans contacted me, and um, just just people talking to me over the years. I, I, I guess should I just should I say that I wasn't surprised? I don't know. I, I don't think That's that fine. I was. I mean, if I'm being honest with you, I really don't think that I was. Um, and I think it's just because I've I, I've been I've been there and I've talked to so many people about it, you know. Mm. Um, I think it's just because I'm a hub of so many people talking to me about Shenmue. Is just that when I when I saw the numbers going up, I was very happy. And um, I, I, but but for me, it was just confirmation. You know what I mean? I, I just from what people were telling me. Um, for, for years, I just I, I could just see it going up, and like I said, just confirmation for me. And I'm like, yeah, this this makes sense. It makes sense to me that this is happening. Were you concerned that they're all at all that there might not be an English dub? Uh, kind of comparing it to say the the Yakuza games where they dubbed the first one in English and then decided just to do mm-hmm. the subtitles. Was that a concern of yours at all? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, absolutely. Of course it is. Um, uh, you know, I love the project. I want to be a part of it. But you know, I, 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 like I said before at the beginning of this, I understand where people's idea about people being concerned about money and how some people were saying, you know what, maybe I would just be fine with the uh, Japanese subtitle if we can get, you know, more of uh, the town or if we can get this uh, special bonus or something like that. And they said, oh, if we can just leave the. Uh, uh, if we have to leave the English voice actors out, then I'd be okay with that. And I, and I understand when people say that because, again, they're, they're they want the game. You know what I mean? It's, I think it's I think it's great that um, some people like me and they like the English sub, or I'm sorry, the uh, English dub. Uh, but in the end, I know they just want a really great game. Um, so I understand what when people say that, of course, you know what I mean. So am I concerned? <laughs> yeah, of course I am. I want to come back. I want to do the game. Um, like I said, it's just it's one of my favorite projects that I've ever worked on in my life, and I, I want to be there and see it through. And I, I want to I want to bring as much as I can to the project and, and help out the project as much as I can. I guess it would be kind of strange for them to do their Kickstarter pitch big, uh, video with a uh, Corey Marshall impersonator if they weren't going to have the game in English. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> you know, again, I, I I kind of always just hoped or maybe assumed that I would uh, that I would be a part of the project, but in the end, you know, I I I know that they they have to make some hard decisions sometimes, and yeah. I I know being in this business that nothing is nothing is ever guaranteed nothing is ever you know uh nothing is ever set in stone right and in the end sometimes you got to get a project a, a, a project out and you have to make some tough decisions and mm-hmm. hey you know they haven't called me yet to do the uh, english voice <laughs> so, so hey it may not still happen so don't you know I, i'm not in the studio yet and here's the thing even if i'm in the studio that doesn't mean that I'm going to finish it, you know, because that's happened before too, where um, something has started and they just said, "Oh my God, we're we're just not going to make it for whatever reason. The project's behind. We've lost so much money, and then you know they've had to they've had to to cut something completely out of a film or you know uh, some you know they, they decided to go in a different direction for a, for a game or something like that. You know, none of this stuff ever." Um, is set in stone. It's just because it's that it's just that kind of business. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah I'm always concerned. I'm always concerned that I'm going to end up on the cutting room floor, or that's not. They're not going to call me for whatever reason. I've been there. I've been um, even even in dance. I've been. I, I was uh, supposed to be in this uh, really great um, project for a company called Momix, and uh, there probably nobody knows who's listening knows anything about dance but there's this company called Palabolus which is a really huge 
a uh, really huge dance company and they do stuff all over the world the kind of like stuff that you would see in Cirque du Soleil or they have been in Cirque du Soleil so I was really excited about being a part of this project and they called me up two days before I was supposed to come in and said oh we have this European tour um, that we need to do we got we got some extra we don't have time to uh, to train new people because it's funny I, it was me my girlfriend at the time who was really serious about and her best friend all got into this company and I thought oh my god this is going to be the greatest thing ever we're going to be touring the world we're going to be like uh, uh, we're going to be making all kinds of money this is a huge company and then like two days before we were supposed to get in and go in and start training and learning the choreography and doing all this stuff they said that they, they had to do something different so I've been there multiple times uh, on all kinds of stuff, you know what I mean? So mm. things change um, with with the blink of an eye. So, yeah, I'm always concerned if I'm going to be a part of the project or not. So that, you know, <laughs> I try to act uh, cool and confident, but at the same time, I, I, I know how I know how things go. Uh, Corey, I'm afraid to say we, uh, we're not going to be needing your services anymore. We've decided to turn Rio into an anthropomorphic otter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? It happens. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and it probably has something to do with uh, you know crunchy moms being really upset about uh, a, a, a character punching people in the face. <laughs> and it, you know... We're just good, they're, yeah. they're like, oh, we need him. We need him to be some sort of a school educator now, who who's an anti-bullying. Um, <laughs> you know, if you see something, say something kind of kind of character. So. <laughs> Kids relate more to otters too these days. Like, yeah, no yeah. one wants to grow up and, and be an adult. The, yeah, otters are where it's at. They're, they're they have a bit of vulnerable feel to them, <laughs> and they're fuzzy, <laughs> and they're fuzzy, and they're cute. Yeah, yeah. And if you've ever seen an otter in real life, they take stuff and like if it's in a shell, they'll smash it. Mm-hmm. They use tools and like lay it on their belly and eat it. It's yeah. adorable. <laughs> We're way off time. On their belly <laughs> while floating. Yeah. In, yeah. in in the uh, in the in the kelp uh, kelp forest. You know what? I think we have something here, guys. I yeah, think we just, need to just to throw the little tiger jacket on him. We're all good to go. <laughs> the Shenmue AM2 Potter cast. <laughs> <I'll do it>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I think we're going to hop into the time machine. Um, So what we're going to do here, Corey, is we're going to ask you to go back to when Shenmue 3 was announced. Oh. No one has... Okay. I'm I'm some... Matt and I are people that you don't know. We've never played Shenmue 2. Never played Shenmue 1. And you're you're there to explain to us or sell us on this game, sell us on donating to Shenmue Three. What would you what would you say to us? Okay, so we're uh, trying to sell you Shenmue Three mm-hmm. uh, as like a Kickstarter. To hmm. so somebody who's never okay. played. Okay. Yeah. What's special about this game? All right. Why, why should I play it? Why do Let's I see? Care? I watch Otters on YouTube. <laughs> I know, right? Jeez. Oh, All right, so. Let's see. Um, Yeah, so in a world (laughs) where you can open up any drawer, kick ass, and feed kittens in the same day, you are a man on a quest for revenge. But first, you have to stop off at the arcade, get your favorite capsule toy at the Tomato Mart, and now... I'm just gonna say I'm already sold. My things wallet's are, open. I, <laughs> things are changing. Things are getting mystical and magical. It's a fairy field world of no. That's 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 going way off. <laughs> <laughs> maybe in the Let's future. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Maybe in the future we're gonna see fairies. Who knows? Mm. All right, but everybody, um, this yeah. So. Anybody who's not played this game, this game is uh, a, 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 a story-based, character-driven game, right? So uh, it is the game that most games are today have been inspired by, built off of. Um, w- 
what we have today is because of Shenmue. Really,、mm. it is that influential of a game. So, when you have、uh, the ability to go anywhere, talk to anybody,、um, really do anything that you want, live your life how you want in a game, that's that Shenmue.、Mm. Um, yeah, all the games that we know and love today are because of、uh, the hard work. That、uh, Yu Suzuki, the Yu team, has、uh, has put together in the past. And really, if people love a good story,、um, if you、uh, really if if you really want to care about、um, the characters that you're playing, then I think these people are really going to love Shenmue. Right, so there are the games that you can run around, blow things up, and there's lots of fun to be had.、Uh, those games are fantastic and great. Shinmu is something different. This is、uh, something that you can really invest yourself in, and really、uh, enjoy a, a life-changing experience within a game.、Mm. I like it. Here's my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Take all my yen. All right. So, <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> and just one other, one other time machine. Let's、Oops. let's fast forward. So, Shenmue Three is out. Everyone's played it. Everyone loved it. We're at Shenmue Four or Shenmue Five. Wait, everyone has played it. Everyone, everyone in the world.、That、It's the biggest success of all time. Fantastic. <laughs>、um, Excellent. So we're at the end of Shenmue, either Shenmue Four or Five. We'll, for the sakes, we'll say that's the end of the the series. We'll we'll call it ten. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you were writing, if you were left responsible for finishing Rio's character arc, what would your ideal ending be for for Rio Hazuki? Oh man, this is a huge question, right?、Hmm. Um, yeah. So that that dives into the ideas of、um, where we're going to be going, right? Is he going to be fulfilling、um, a, a destiny of his own? Is it is it simply a quest for revenge,、uh, or maybe I should say vengeance? Uh, because I, I, you know, there's probably a, a, a difference there, right? There, you know, there's like a, kind of a, a, a blinded、um, kind of reaction, reactionary event of revenge, right? Or maybe vengeance, which is、mm. a sense of justice. Maybe you have to stop something that is、um, bigger than just what happened to you, right?、Mm. But or Um, it really looks like to me that we are getting into something bigger, right? Something bigger than himself, something bigger than what happened to him, something bigger than really could be what changed, what、uh, you know, like a a cycle of what happens in our world. And、uh, yeah, I think、uh, um, Hasuki is going to be fulfilling a sort of、uh, destiny where he. Gets placed into where where he is chosen really to get uh, uh, put into the path of something that he will be able to、um, to stop a, 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 cladic, a cataclysmic event and、uh, make sure that、uh, the world is continuing its、uh, proper flow, right?、Mm-hmm. It's.、Uh, Um, I, and I think that's what I would like to see. That his his quest for vengeance is not just to stop、uh, a bad man who looks like he's doing bad things to a lot of a、uh, lot of good people, but really that he is、uh, thrust into this、uh, course that destiny has put him on to、um, to to play that role of the、uh, of somebody who didn't really expect. To be this this hero that is able to、uh, set things right and make sure that、uh, 
but the flow of time <laughs> is is it continues to function the way that it should. Mm. Interesting. And I, I I like your differentiation there between revenge and vengeance, <laughs> and I'm kind of on the same same wavelength there. I don't. I think by the end of it, he will he will also see the difference there, mm-hmm. and I I hope it plays out that way, and I think it will. Yeah, um, I, 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 and I think as far as, you know, again, I'm 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 not I I, I want to tell people right now that I do not have this is this is not any sort of privy information that I have, mm. but I think that he you know he does. He, he is on this quest because of what happened to him but as his character develops right we talked about this earlier as he starts to kind of realize that things are just bigger than himself he started out this quest trying to just get back right trying to um trying to you know to get what's what you know what i mean just trying to be like you know what this happened to me i'm going to going to strike back because what would you do in that situation of course you would you would be like hey man you know killed my dad i'm i'm going to get some revenge Mm -hmm. um but as he develops he does um i i I definitely foresee him it's it's already started to kind of play out with his character already that it's not just about striking back that it is about being that person who can do something uh, to, to to make the world right, and it's yeah, it's not about getting what makes you feel good, but actually being able to, um, uh, uh, being able to take that higher path, and like, and, and I, yeah, I hope like I hope that people understand the difference. To what I think his his revenge versus his his vengeance, so. Mm-hmm. Perfect. That, I guess, concludes the questions that we have for you. Yep. Um, we did receive a few fan questions, so uh, we'll take a, a peek through these, I guess. Um, okay. First one would be uh, from a fellow by the name of Dustin Jansen that we received via Twitter. Uh, Corey, were you happy with the quality of the English dub back then? Um... Is this about him yeah, or that's the a, entire thing? The, the whole thing, so the the whole process. Yeah. Um, well, I you know I said this I've said this before in the past too. Um, we had to do a lot. We had to do a lot of uh, English dubbing, and we had to pull a lot of people from a lot of different places. Um, so in the end. Am I happy with how a Shenmue turned out? I think in hindsight, I can say yes, because really, it's kind of what makes the game endearing to a lot of people, because sometimes it is really quirky and really strange. Um, at the time, you kind of feel like, um, was I happy with the with the dub? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I had I think I had my questions. Uh, as well uh, you know it's just a just a young actor and i kind of thought like uh um what, you know what is this process and where are we getting uh, some of these people and i know that uh it's it's kind of hard to find different english voice actors in japan and uh, yeah, i know they did the best that they could and we had some people doing multiple characters and and I thought, okay, I don't, I don't know exactly what they're doing or where they're going, um, but I, you know, I just kind of felt like they're, they're, they're gonna do it how they want to do it, and there's, you know, there's nothing I can really do or say about it. But like I said, at, at the time, I kind of thought like, okay, well, I don't know, we'll, we'll see where, where, where this goes. Um, in hindsight, though, doesn't that, does, I mean, don't, don't we still talk about this to this day? <laughs> Yeah. You know, what, what, what the, the funny things that makes Shenmue so great sometimes, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a large part so of why just, I find it endearing, yeah, is the, the yeah, voice acting. And I, I, yeah, I think that's, that's, I think that's the word, right, endearing. 
mm-hmm. right? I don't know. It's 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 great. And so yeah, at the time I kind of questioned the process, and I thought, hey, you know, they they know what they're doing, but yeah, sure, whatever. Um, but yeah, now of course it's just great. I love it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our, our next question is from uh, Bertram Allen Mullen uh, via Facebook. Do you know of any side villain fights that might take place in Shenmue 3 that involve fighting someone that is not bald? <laughs> is that because... <laughs> I'm assuming it's because of Chai and Du and you both Chai. Be, yeah, yeah, be sure. The, the big side villains, uh, I guess. Rio's got something against people who have no hair. Yeah, maybe he does. I know, right? Or they have something against Bald- him, I guess. Baldism? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> As a person who's balding himself, I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> I might have to get a refund on my kickstart. Hey, maybe... A, <laughs> I know, right? Maybe. Hey, maybe in protest, we'll all shave our heads. <laughs> and, uh... And we'll be like, come yeah, at us, we'll, Rio. We'll, we'll say... That's right. Bald people <laughs> are people, too. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah. Well, no. I mean, I I have uh, I have. Well, no. You know what? I think everybody's seen the same things I have at this point. Yeah. Um, as far, as far as all these other side characters yeah. and stuff like that. But hey, yeah, we have something going on there. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe maybe we'll all shave our heads one day and mm-hmm. and uh, we'll, we'll we'll do some sort of fake protest. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you've already kind of touched on this, uh, but Joel Agostino via Twitter um, wanted to ask if you've started working on Shenmue 3. Um, obviously, you've said you haven't stepped into the, the booth or anything, but I guess technically kind of doing some planning. You mentioned you're, you'll be recording most likely stateside. So I guess you've done mm-hmm. a little bit of the administrative work, I guess. Sure. Um, sure, yeah, a little bit of that stuff. Um you know, again, uh, with with things kind of being a little bit tentative with uh, their process over there, with all of their um, development and all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I know how they're working over there. I can say that. I know that they have their heads down and they are plunking away. Um, so they, you know, not to put a too fine a point on it, but they don't really have that much time for me. <laughs> <laughs> right now, you know what I mean. Like so they, they don't share are any uh, bust any, their butts over there. Yeah, they don't share any like progress updates with you that we don't get or anything. Yeah, you know, to be honest with you, I wish that I was that special, but <laughs> um, they they are definitely. Um, I I know for a fact that they are uh, really busting their butts over there, really trying to get some stuff done. So yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, I wish that I could say that really I go into the studio every other day, put in my input, I tell them not to do this, to do that, <laughs> all that kind of stuff, but... Uh... <laughs> I, always, I always knew Rio was such a diva. Like that. <laughs> I know, see, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's in my contract that I get to, I get to dictate what happens uh, to his character, what ladies he gets to hook up with, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. <laughs> Or uh, which which ones he gets to ignore, more likely. <laughs> no, I know, right? <laughs> which ladies he likes to, uh, you know, be around and then do nothing about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our next question comes from uh, Jake Workala. Um, any advice for anyone uh, looking to get into voice acting? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, the thing is, is that... Um, it's I, okay. So here, I mean, it's really not that big of a of a secret, right? So you kind of, man, this is hard because it's it's hard because you need to start getting. Here's the thing. All right, you need to start taking voice acting lessons. You need to start. Um, going in and recording stuff. You need to start developing characters or voices. And luckily, I haven't had to had to do a whole lot of that in my life. So, I mean, what kind of advice am I supposed to give about <laughs> character <laughs> voices? But most voice actors out there um, do have a, a, a repertoire of things to pull from, right? You know, I mean, uh, I mean, just probably the most famous guy that we can think of right now is uh, Seth MacFarlane, right? Well, the guy's got you know a um, hundred different voices. He's he's a little special because he's he's actually he's actually 
pretty good. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's actually really good. But if you can start nailing some stuff down like that, it, you really kind of have to kind of just start doing the work. You know what I mean? You need to, and, I, and I hate to say this because you really do kind of need to spend your own money at first. Like I said, you got to go in and get these voice acting, uh, acting lessons from – professionals who can teach who can kind of mentor you really you kind of need to find um somebody who can not not just you know not just somebody on craigslist who's who's some actor who who wants to do voice who wants to do acting lessons now no i mean like people who do this professionally and it's not easy and it's not cheap and i wish that i i wish that i had some sort of magic formula to give people out there and be like oh actually if you only did this and talked to these people and hung out at this house then you would be a voice actor but uh yeah i mean you kind of need to you kind of need to step into a studio and you need to start recording some stuff um and you know you can find um different you can even find that stuff online about how to do how to even start with that stuff and kind of start practicing and all that kind of thing and then yeah you need to kind of get on there's a couple of different uh, voiceover um uh i guess uh, places online where you can find some uh work at first and do your research too because there's some ones on there that are not going to get you any work and you're just going to waste your money and then there's some um, some better ones out there uh, that you can actually get some work off of. And you know what? Then st- once you've already done your, um, once you kind of recorded some stuff, you can approach um, some different voiceover agents. And then here's a, here's another thing too. Where are you? Right? Like, are you are you in a big city like New York or Los Angeles where you can? Um, where you can go into a studio and record or, uh, you know what I mean? Or are you going to have to try and find a place where a band records, you know what I mean? So you mm. can do that kind of stuff so you can have some sort of access to um, to a little bit more professional equipment with a microphone and with some soundproof walls. Or, I mean, what a lot of us do, and a ton of us do this, is that you have your own uh, studio inside of your house where you kind of soundproof one of your rooms and you buy uh, you know a pretty decent microphone it kind of depends I mean if you're in the middle of Ohio and you want to do some voiceover work you're probably gonna have to do something like that right yeah so you're probably gonna have to build a studio inside of your house right and it just find a nice small room whether it's a, a walk-in closet or <laughs> you know what I mean like I, I, I don't know you know you need to try to find some place that's a really quiet room in your house put up some put up some uh, egg, uh, some of the egg foam crate stuff on your wall and or maybe oh you know what they also have too they have these uh, boxes now that you can get um, that's kind of like quote unquote professional voiceover uh, box there is these boxes that you can get or you know what just make your own you know what I mean if you just put some plywood together buy some foam put it in there just kind of create your own little box some people have been so desperate <laughs> when I, i've spoken to some i've spoken to some people who were like oh my god i was i was traveling i was taking a trip to my uncle's house in wisconsin and i needed to record something i had my ipad with me and i threw a comforter over my head and recorded <laughs> recorded it under the comforter you know what i mean like there are there are you know tips and tricks like that that you can find that people do online and really you just kind of need to start doing the work you know what i mean you kind of need to just start um start doing uh like i said recordings characters voiceovers you can find all a lot of that stuff online and then just start plunking away you need to find somebody who might represent you or somebody who um you know, like I said, you guys need to try to find a mentor if you guys can do that kind of stuff too. So that's yeah. that's what I recommend, and and that kind of goes for a lot of stuff in acting. It's not easy at first, and it's not cheap, and I hate it, and it sucks, and <laughs> <laughs> you know. So yeah, um, yeah but you know, another having... thing too that. that is... No, go ahead. Oh, I was just I, I was just gonna say, you know, another thing too is that acting has really been. Um, my life, you know what I mean. I, I've never, I, I mean, I've I've done a couple of things here and there to make a little extra work, a uh, little extra uh, money. But everything that I have done to make money has been entertainment related. You know what I mean? Like, I, like 
even when I uh, needed some extra money, I, I was working over at the LA Opera, and I was doing, um, you know, some of the um, uh, some of the background work at the, uh, the LA Opera, just because it was the only thing. It was like really late at night, and I had my entire day, and I was making a little extra cash. Well, the thing is, is that I met a guy there who got me my first. Um, who got me my first uh, production work that I did on films, right? So uh, just, you know, if you really want to do act in general, I think I need to kind of start doing all of that. Like everything I did um, was all, you know, if it was stage work or if it were um, doing stuff in film or if it were doing, you know, everything I did was acting related so i knew people people talked to me people liked me you know you do need to you do need to make friends you know that that stuff is real like you actually need to know people in the business same thing with the stunt work that i did Mm -hmm. because uh sometimes i'd be like oh well we need a bunch of people in this scene because a car is going to be careening through um, uh, 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 an outdoor cafe so all the people sitting there need to be stunt people well crap that means that we need at least 50 stunt people to be in this scene so you know sometimes you got to make some phone calls because they decided that oh we need to film that scene today because of money or because of an actor is doing something else with their schedule you know what I mean mm-hmm. so I, this is kind of like yeah you do need to know people too so um I, I know that, that 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 also is not a magic pill that I can give people, but it, yeah, you just kind you kind of need to go out there and do it all day, all the time. So gotta hustle. <laughs> yep. Gotta hustle. It, it's true, man. You really gotta hustle. Yeah. And so our that's, final. That's, that's what I recommend for. I was gonna say that's what I recommend for acting in general, and then the previous stuff that I said before uh, mm. f- for for voice acting. So yeah, I imagine having a good range for voice acting is, is going to help you immensely. I, I was my mind was blown when I learned that the same guy was both Fred from Scooby Doo and Megatron from Transformers. <laughs> so so Frank Lampard. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. If people, yeah, right. If people look that up. Um, people will be surprised that the stuff that they saw, you know, like cartoons as a kid, um, that, yeah, oh, my God, that was the same person? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, what I just said is exactly true because you never know if you're going to be playing, um, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, a, a kid in, in diapers. Like Stewie, <laughs> you don't know if you're going to be playing Stewie or if you're going to be playing Megatron, you know what I mean? You really do need to have a range. Young and old, um, and, and different types of characters, excited characters, lazy characters, you know. And another thing, too, if people can just, if people can kind of find some of their favorite characters that they watch already on television and kind of do their own version of that, then that is something, you know what I mean? Like, if yep. you, if you, find a character that you like and you can just kind of practice their character and do your own version of that and i have i said stewie several times now but if you do your own version of stewie that doesn't really sound like stewie but kind of sounds like stewie mm. that people wouldn't be like oh he's trying to do stewie you know what i mean like because mm-hmm. uh, you don't you, you kind of want to find your own version of that and and make it your own and so when you when you find this hoity-toity character who's maybe wearing, uh, you know, he's got a suit and his bow tie and he's got his monocle on or something like that, then maybe you can kind of pull from that and do your own version of it and make it sound completely new and different and actually fit that particular character. I'm not doing Stewie. I'm doing Rex Harrison. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, right, which is, which is his inspiration, right? Yeah. So. All right, Andrew's got one more brand. And our, our last uh, question from it's a, this is a two part question. Uh, the two parts are completely unrelated. <laughs> um, from, via Facebook from uh, Jim, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this right, Giovanni. Um, next time Jim goes out and gets takeout, uh, if you had to choose, should he get Thai food, Japanese, Chinese, or Indian? <laughs> Decide mm. Jim's next meal. Man, you know what? You're asking me to pick between my kids, man. This is, oh. See, it's a good thing. It's a good thing I only have one kid. 
Um, well, um, you know, um, uh, us as a family, my wife has been kind of cooking some really excellent Indian food recently, which is, mm. Mm, yeah, that's some really great stuff out there. Um, however, and this is this is not a joke. My favorite food in the entire world is Japanese food, and if I could eat Japanese food every day for the rest of my life, well, I can. But I would. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I love I love Japanese food. When I was in Japan, I um, thoroughly enjoyed my uh, culinary quest throughout all of Japan, and it was uh, as great. I'm, Japanese food is my favorite. So if if you if you if you got some good Japanese food in your area. To do it. What was your favorite dish that you found? You know, you know what's hilarious. It's it's not even anything that's really uh, exotic or um, you know nothing that anybody's never heard of before. It was this soba shop next to my uh, next to Sega when I was recording there every day, and I I, I seriously went there. Um, if not every day, every other day. Literally for lunch, I would have soba and a rice bowl with uh, like just a couple of uh, beef strips on top, or maybe some unagi, or maybe some. Uh, and it's it was so simple, but it was so like clean and delicious. And it, it the 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 soba there for me was just and it was the uh, buckwheat soba that I that I had. Mm. And um, it was the it was the kind where they they and some guys in there would go and they would just have stacks and stacks and stacks of these these trays of soba, which I was like, whoa, dude! I thought Americans could really put it down, but these guys, you know what I mean? I think that I don't know they were carving up for some sort of uh, marathon at uh, at work that day or something, but mm. um, uh, yeah, just the just this uh, soba with the uh, the the soba sauce that they give you, and then they give you oh another thing that they give you at the end of the meal is the like the the so-called soba tea is like the the water from the uh, the the soba that they make instead of you know throwing all that water away, which they do is they pour it into your soup base at the end and they give you this kind of like soba tea hmm. that you that you drink at the end of your meal and and that was great. It was this hole in the wall, you know what I mean? Family owned. I saw the same woman all day, every, you know, uh, same woman every day who um who just knew who I was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember one time I, for some reason, I don't know what happened, but I didn't have, I don't know how this happened, but I didn't have money. And I was like, what? Like, what? I don't have money in my wallet. Like, what happened? You know what I mean? Mm. And I told her, I said, hey, um, I, I don't have money today. <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't speak any very much English, but she was just kind of like, oh, okay. And so I just left. <laughs> You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think I went to an ATM or something like that, and I got some cash out. You know, and I came back like several hours later, and I was like, here, sorry. And she was like, oh, no. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, of course, she knew who I was, and I'm there all the time, so she didn't mm -hmm. care whether I paid or not. You know what I mean? I just came back later and paid. But, yeah, as far as favorite meal, that's, I don't know why, but that was, just, that was it. So good. <laughs> I don't have any money. Uh, can I leave one of my shoes? <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> I know. I promise I'll come back. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be getting this real nice watch in a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Will you trade for a watch? <laughs> <laughs> and the other half of Jim's question, uh, he wants you to elaborate on your almost hit by a car story. I'm not sure what oh, that's which referencing. One? <laughs> <laughs> which I time i almost to. got hit by a car i i did get hit by a car once when i was a kid hmm. and um i i you know i lived in new york city for a while and i, well, I guess i should say i lived and i worked there um so you you know you get hit guy you get hit by cabs like uh, every other day you know and, <laughs> oh, okay they, I, I have a question about that because okay. <laughs> like literally the i think it was like october fifth or sixth my wife and i and and another couple were down there and we got hit by a, a car outside of madison square garden probably about a dozen people got hit he had his window down i had some choice words for him mm -hmm. and so did my wife and so did my friend and everyone else just kept walking <laughs> 
Is getting hit by yeah, a car well, there a regular thing? They're from New York, right? I mean, uh, 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 right? Yep. Yeah, everyone else is from New York except for us. Yeah, all these other people are locals, so it was just kind of like, uh, yeah. So it's, you you guys had something to say because you're not from there. Yeah, that <laughs> that that just happens, you know. And the thing is that if you if you have to get somewhere. You kind of drive up on the sidewalk sometimes. You kind of go between the lanes. You kind of uh, you kind of hit people. I mean, I've gotten hit multiple times by cabs, and you just kind of keep going. You go about your day, and it's that's just what happens. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, w- w- I guess I'll I guess I'll explain when I actually did get hit, and this was completely my fault when I was a kid, just being you know stupid kid. Um, me and my friends, we were doing a uh, field trip uh, at one of my schools. We went over to a park and we talked about the uh, aquifer there in Texas and, you know, educational importance of uh, pollution and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, we were actually, because the park was actually close to the school, we walked there. So we were walking back and uh, we all kind of lined up on the side of the road. There was this one part. Um, that we kind of had to cross a, a, a kind of a busy road. Everything else was pretty easy, but there's just one part. And um, we all kind of lined up, and me and my friends kind of stupidly decided that we were going to race across the street. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we all kind of lined up, and kind of I, I kind of backed up, you know what I mean, and kind of got into a, a running stance. <laughs> and... Uh, um, okay, the teacher was kind of looking for the cars, and she goes, Okay, everybody, ready, set. And I jumped the go because I thought that she was going to say go. <laughs> but yeah. I, again, I was like, I'm going to be there across the street before my friends are. And I kind of jumped because I thought she was going to say go. Anyway, um, as I leapt out, a uh, Ford Bronco <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> was was uh, was going across the road at that exact time, and it hit me so hard that it knocked off both of my shoes and sent my shoes flying down the road. Oh, jeez. And I got thrown into the air, and um, a car was coming in the opposite direction. <laughs> and as I was thrown into the air, I started kind of heading down <laughs> with my head and face going down into the concrete. So, of course, you know, luckily I've been studying martial arts since I was uh, very young. And you know how you always practice falling down or rolling, just doing shoulder rolls, somersaults, back rolls, all that kind of stuff, just in case you ever get knocked down fall down i mean uh, people who do grappling do this kind of stuff all the time but yeah um you know it's just something that you that you practice and as i was coming down yeah i just tucked my body did a a a shoulder roll over my right shoulder and kind of jumped up onto the other side of the uh, uh, uh as i jumped up onto the sidewalk and the car had to come to a screeching halt (laughs) <laughs> and um, I kind of I kind of feel like oh well if I didn't do that uh, maybe I would have face planted on the uh, concrete here in the road and maybe that car would have hit me and I thought hmm yeah martial arts is not just for <laughs> defending yourself but also mm. can uh, save your life when you're being a stupid kid you know <laughs> yeah. nice, nice break fall so when you landed on the other side did you go ta-da I meant to do that <laughs> Yeah, um, you know it's funny. When I was a kid, I, 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 my first thought was, my mom is going to be so mad at me. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, I just kind of like sat down on the other side, all upset, you know. Mm. And then the teachers and the uh, kids came up and they're like, "Oh wow, I'm really surprised. There's not any blood." And I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> "You know what I mean?" Like the only thing you could think of. I was like my mom yelling at me because you know I did something stupid or whatever and yes you know what I mean and then I was upset because they called an ambulance and I was like no don't do that oh no <laughs> you know what I mean because they just wanted to make sure that I didn't 
whatever hit my head or you know whatever I guess the teachers were just being cautious and I just thought like oh my god the more commotion there is the like I could just see my mom's head exploding you know that's all I could think about when I was a kid you know Mm -hmm. but uh but yeah you know it's funny being in martial arts for a long time people have told me stories like that like oh yeah you know I've never had to uh, defend my life but uh one day I was at work and this uh rebar pipe I don't know, or, or some kind of pipe fell down, uh, came off of the wall, and he caught it with his hand, you know, being all like awesome. <laughs> uh, nice. And he said that he broke some of his, said that he broke like two or three of his metacarpals in his hand, but he was like, yeah, if it would have hit me in the head, then I probably would have had a concussion or maybe even something really bad, but mm. did this like wow, really awesome move. And, like, like, like a QTE? Like, hmm. like, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Dude, exactly, right? <laughs> hey, <come on. laughs> All right. So, anyway, yeah, we'll... I, you know, it's, it's funny. So I, I tell people maybe you should sign up for martial arts, not just for defending yourself, but for life's little accidents from time to yeah. time. <laughs> I, yeah, I agree. I've done like a decade of martial arts that I think they're worthwhile. Yeah. Um all right. Well, I think that's all the questions we have. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, we, Matt and I both really want to thank you uh, for taking the time out of your day to, to sit down with us and, yeah. uh, and, and record these episodes. Very generous the time. Yep. Thank you. And hopefully in the future, yeah, if, I got uh, it. once everything's all said and done with three, um, we'd love to get your thoughts on that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, guys, seriously, you know, thank you very much for, for having me on. I'm, I'm always... I'm always honored um, um, to, to do something like this. And, um, you know, thank you for having me. Thanks to everybody out there for being fans of the game. Thanks to everybody out there who really made it happen. And, um, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I really hope that people understand how much I appreciate you guys and everything that you do for for the industry and for for me and my family and everything so thank thank thanks to everybody out there great um, uh, so you can catch us on the on the social medias we're at shenmu aim to pod on twitter uh we are shenmu aim to podcast at gmail.com uh shenmu aim to podcast on facebook we have a page and a group and uh, youtube.com slash shenmu aim to podcast and on itunes and tons of other popular uh podcast sites Cool. And check Corey out on uh, Facebook and Twitter. We'd like to thank our sponsor this week, Ling Ling Porridge. Please, sir, I don't want some more. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks a million, man. We really, really appreciate it. Yep, no problem. Have, have an excellent day. Thank you, guys. Bye.